morning! Happy Sunday, everybody! Um, as you can see from this morning's title, we're doing anti-desk yoga today. Now, that doesn't mean you have to be a desk dweller or a particular sort of couch potato to benefit nor enjoy this class. Um, it's just the terminology I've used for focusing on all the parts of the body that become weak, tight and stiff from sitting and I feel that no matter what you do for a living or what your lifestyle we can all benefit from uh, counteracting the movements of sitting or the, the shape of sitting. Um, there's nothing particular that you need for this class. Uh, do expect um, a fair few lunges so if you are practicing on a particular hard floor without carpets and a, and a thin mat you could consider having something to cushion your knees if you need to, um, even just a cushion, as long as it's not too sort of unstable and it makes you feel like you're kneeling on a wobble board or something, um, if you've got so soft knees. If you don't have anything and you do suddenly find that your knees aren't feeling very happy, you can always um, double your mat over like this and then suddenly you've got like three layers of mat and it's much more comfortable for your knees. So just a little word of warning there. So we'll get started and we're going to start in a child's pose. So if you... Widen your knees to be as wide as your mat-ish. Big toes to touch and sink your hips to your heels and then walking those hands away. Steadily allow your body to fold down. Slowly let your forehead find the floor. Maybe just allow your eyes to close and to give your body a moment to settle in here, to feel like it's properly arrived and is ready. Start to feel a heaviness in your hips sinking down towards your feet and just become very aware of the shape that your body is making and how your body is feeling in this shape. Noticing the heavy parts of the body against the mat, the knees, the tops of the feet, the forehead and then feeling the lightness in the rest of the body, the arms, the chest and just allow yourself to focus on your breathing for a moment taking a deep breath in and feeling that expanse into your chest and slowly breathing out feeling the body soften and sink here again to breathe in and to breathe all the way out just take a little reminder to yourself as usual to try to stay connected to your breath in this way as you move through all the different postures just being mindful that we're not holding our breath and we're doing our best to keep it slow controlled and purposeful you might want to choose here to stack your hands up onto your fingertips, forming little tents with the hands to find a little bit more opening into the upper body. Maybe a press into those fingertips to keep your hips sinking a little heavier towards your heels. Staying here for one more deep breath in, widen into the chest. And exhale, softening and releasing. You can push your way all the way up onto hands and knees. Bring your knees a little bit closer together and as you sit back onto your heels, just have your toes untucked so you're sitting onto the tops of the ankles and the shins. Interlacing your hands and turning the palms to face the sky, pressing them upwards as you send your gaze up as well. Feel like you're lifting your rib cage away from your hips. Exhale, release your hands, interlace them behind you. Use a nice deep breath in to draw the fist towards your feet. Lift your chin away from your chest and lift the chest towards the sky. You can even lean back a little here if that feels good in your body. Holding this shape to breathe in, expand across the belly, expand across the chest. And exhale to release, to let the shoulders release and roll back forwards. Hands onto the mat, coming into tabletop, so shoulders above the wrists, hips above the knees. And then finding some movements in the spine with our cat and cow. So take a nice deep breath in, dip the ribs to the mat, lift the chest looking forwards. Exhale to round the spine, chin to the chest, tailbone tucks under, hollowing out the belly. Breathing in, scoop the chest forwards, gaze forwards. Breathing out, keep the arms straight and strong as you broaden the shoulder blades. Again, breathing in. And breathing out. 
Good. And then bring yourself all the way back to sit onto the shins where you came from. And we're going to take the right hand just behind us and just off towards the right. So it's a little bit sort of right, but also backwards. Then with your left arm, take a deep breath in, reach it up towards the sky. So you're finding that length in the left side of the body. And now start to draw circles with that arm. Doesn't matter which direction you're taking it, because I'm going to get you to swap in a minute. You can take your gaze with your fingertips if you like, if that feels all right in your neck, to start to find some movements there as well. Let that direction change. Really focus on the backwards reach, so the bit that goes behind your body. See how far away from you you can reach. And then draw the arm all the way back to the sky. Pause there, lift, lengthen, push your ribs towards the left. And then releasing and switching our side. So left hand step just behind you, just off towards the left. Breathe in, the right arm goes up. Pull the arm away from the ribs and then find those circles. Big, large rings. Finding as much backward movement as we can. And then allow the direction to change, either forwards or backwards. And again, finding that opening sensation across the chest as you reach as far back as you can. On your next circle, keep the arm nice and high in the sky. Take another deep breath in, push your ribs a little towards the right. And then exhale, release it. Great, hands back onto the mat in front of us. Keeping the right hand a little bit more towards the center of the mat. With an inhale, send the left arm to the sky, twisting the chest, reaching tall. And then exhale, thread the arm under the armpit, coming into our threaded needle pose, palm faces the sky, coming down onto the side of the shoulder and the side of the head, and just give yourself a moment to find that comfortable position. This right hand, leave it here in front of the face to begin with. We're just gonna allow the body to settle into the twist for a moment here. Take a nice deep breath down into the belly. And slowly breathing out. Now let's see what our balance is like today. So you can always choose to come back to this shape if this next one proves a little bit too tricky. Your right leg, you're going to reach with a bent knee, toes towards the sky. Now crucially, keep your pelvis facing down. Don't allow your pelvis to turn to the side. See if your right hand can come to find your foot, preferably the inside of the foot next to your big toe, and then kick that foot to the sky. Trying not to fall over to our left side onto our bum. That's usually the way that we go. Keeping that pelvis facing the floor to maintain our balance. Press down into the shoulder. Hold your core in firm. Strong kick through the leg. Breathe in. And then breathing out. If you're still up there, let yourself place down and unthread as we come to see if we can find success on the other side. Left hand into the center of the mat. Breathing in, right arm goes to the sky. Breathing out, thread it underneath, palm faces the sky, right out alongside the chest, and let your head and shoulder rest down. Just pause here for a moment. Think of your weight tipping slightly backwards to stretch across that upper back. And then option two, stay here, or it's the left leg this time. Reaches to the sky, keep the heel pulling close in towards the bum. See if your left hand can come to find that foot. If it does, kick that foot to the sky. Maintain your balance, keep some weight towards the left side of your mat. Don't allow everything to push towards the right. Pelvis stays down, shoulder stays pressing. Take a deep breath in, see if you can find a little bit more lift. And then breathing out placing the knee down or picking yourself up off the floor and unthread yourself back into tabletop. So from here, tuck the toes under behind you. And then this time as you sit back, find that stretch into the soles of the feet. So if your little toes don't tend to want to join the party here, just let them tuck under as well. Balls of the feet to be relatively close together. And just give yourself a moment to sit here onto the heels, finding that stretch into the soles of the feet. Sitting your chest nice and tall, and then the fingertips just to come to rest onto the knees in front, uh, in front of the knees in front of you. You're going to shift the weight back so the knees lift. Imagine you're trying to sink your heels to the mat, but they don't need to touch down. That's not really what we're after here. But as you sink your weight backwards, push your knees wide so that your body starts to sink between your thighs. 
We're then going to rock all the way back forwards. Let the knees just hover. Don't place them down, but pretty much where we came from. Then again, rocking back, thinking of the heels dropping towards the mat. Now push your knees wide. Find that activation in your hips. Again, rock back forwards, hover those knees. I'm using my fingertips, you can do that, or you can keep your palms flat. And then again, pushing the weight back, driving the knees wide, keep the arms reaching forwards. Good, last one, drawing it forwards, little hover of those knees, and then sending it back. Push the knees away from you, keep those arms reaching. And then all the way back, drop your knees down. This time, make sure the knees are hip distance apart, so there's a gap between them, and stack yourself nice and tall onto the knees. The toes stay tucked under behind us so that our heels are nicely lifted. Think of turning your body to face the right hand side of the mat and the right hand to come to rest onto the heels. Just fingertips is fine. From there, with a nice deep breath in, send your left arm to the sky, finding that length in the left side of the body. And as you exhale, sit your bum down, come back to face the other side. So moving to the other side, lift your hips up, left fingertips onto left heel, right arm reaches up and over. Exhale, sit the bum down, come to the other side. Right hand, right heel, breathe in, reach the left arm to the sky. Breathing out, returning to centre, good. Left side, breathing in, push those hips forward, squeeze the glutes. Breathing out to return down, good. Couple more, breathe in, hips forwards, chest pushes to the sky. Breathing out, last one, breathing in. Open through the front line of the chest. And breathing out to release. Good. So hands to come onto the mat in front of us. We'll come into our first lovely down dog. Maybe just step your knees back a little bit first before lifting the knees, lifting the hips and taking a little pedal of the legs if you like to get your hamstrings joining in on this lovely Sunday morning party. A nice strong press into the hands, a press of the back of the thighs towards the back of the room. And let your legs become still. Those shoulder blades stay nice and broad as we find some activity in the shoulders here. So in our down dog, our normal alignment in the upper body is for the shoulder blades to stay broad, us to find a nice extension out through the shoulders. And we're aiming for a long line from wrists all the way up to sit bones. But we can turn this into more of a shoulder and chest stretch by allowing the shoulder blades to dip to dip together and the forehead to drop towards the mat. So think of letting your shoulder blades pinch in towards each other as you really sink the weight of your head and your chest down towards the floor. Obviously it matters zero amount how close to the floor you get, but you're allowing your forehead to think of moving towards the mat. You'll probably also feel it more into your hamstrings. But think about opening through the chest, opening through the armpits, keep pressing into the hands. It's a big, big stretch. Breathe in and then breathe out, release out of that. Let your knees drop down so that your shoulders have a moment to recover. Walking your hands back. Keep those toes tucked under, lift your hips to the sky and find yourself into a ragdoll fold at the back of the mat. So knees to be bent so the belly and the thighs rest together. Arms can dangle freely, or you can cross them if that's more comfortable. And as always, you can stay stationary, or if you prefer, find yourself a soft little sway from left to right, all the while still encouraging the sit bones towards the sky, and the elbows and the crown of the head down towards the floor. Great. Take a nice deep breath in and then breathing out. Bring your hands back to the mat. Walk forwards, this time all the way into a plank. Shoulders come to the top of the mat on top of those wrists and the heels push out behind us. Inhale as we hold, tailbone stays tucked. As you exhale, option to drop the knees to help us support the body as we come all the way down to the floor. Chest and belly find the mat at the same time, keeping the torso nice and rigid. So once we're down to the belly, coming into our little Superman movement. Let me move back a little. So the hips and the belly are gonna stay down on the mat the whole time. You're going to inhale, float the chest, float the thighs, reach out through your toes. Now bring your thumbs to your shoulders as you look forwards. 
Keep everything lifted. Breathe in, reach your arms out in front of you, Superman style. And breathe out, tap your uh, thumbs to your shoulders. And then reach your arms behind you. Think of your little fingers coming together, but obviously they're not going to touch. Now keep everything lifted. Thumbs to shoulders, arms to reach out in front of you. This isn't easy. Thumbs to shoulders, arms behind the back. Think of little fingers connecting. Thumbs to shoulders, reach the fingertips out. Keep reaching through your toes. Good, two more guys, keep lifting. Thumbs to shoulders, reach the arms back. Pinch the shoulder blades, thumbs to shoulders. Reach the arms forwards. Good, let everything release and let go. Maybe wiggle your hips out if your bum was feeling that. And then roll yourself all the way back. Hips into the sky, into your down dog, and just stretch out all those muscles that just worked particularly hard for us there. And from here, with your inhale, look forwards towards the top of your mat. This time we're walking to the top. Keeping your hands on the floor as long as you can. Once you're at the top of the mat, give yourself a moment in your fold. Let your head dangle in front of your legs, compressing your belly towards your thighs. And then with your hands to your waist, your knees to stay bent and chin to the chest, allow, allow yourself to slowly roll up to stand. All the way to the top, until you're standing tall. Allow your feet to come together, your shoulders to roll back. And your gaze to soften, face to soften, and just give yourself this moment of stillness. Moving on to our sun salutes from here, sun salute C. Inhale, arms to the sky, gazing up. Exhale, forward fold, hands to the floor, soften the knees if you need to, let your head dangle. Inhale, halfway rise, fingertips to the shins, chest pulls forwards. Exhale, hands to the floor, the left foot stays where it is, the right foot steps all the way back, lowering down onto the back knee. Keep the back toes tucked under, breathing in, reach your arms to the sky, let your palms connect as you sink your hips forwards and down. Breathing out, hands return to the floor, front foot steps back, hips go to the sky and we come straight into downward facing dog. Take a nice deep breath in and a slow breath out. With your inhale, the right leg lifts to the sky, three-legged dog. On the exhale, step that foot between the hands, give it the help it needs to get there, it might not get all the way by itself. Drop the back knee to the floor, the toes stay tucked under. Inhale, lift the chest, sink the hips and arms, compress the ears. Exhale, return the hands to the mat. Back foot steps in, meets the front foot at the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway rise, lengthen out the spine. And exhale to fold back over the legs. <sighs> Inhale, all the way up to stand, thighs squeeze together, belly holds in. Second side, exhale, hands return to the floor. Inhale, lengthening the chest forwards. Exhale, place the hands down either side of the feet, bend your knees as much as you need to, so that's going to help you find your alignment in your lunge as your left foot steps all the way back, knee to the floor, toes stay tucked under, breathing in, chest rises, fingertips reach to the sky, breathing out, hands to the floor, foot steps back, downward facing dog, one round of breath, inhale, exhale. Left leg, inhale to the sky, three-legged dog. Exhale, get the foot between the hands at the top of the mat one way or another. Drop the back knee down, keep the toes tucked under. Breathing in, lift the chest, gazing up, open the front of the body. Exhale, hands to the floor, back foot steps in, feet together. Inhale, lengthen the chest forwards. Exhale, folding over your legs. Inhale, come all the way back to stand, reach the arms to the sky. And again, as you exhale, fold the body over, touching the mat, releasing the neck. Inhale, lengthen the spine, shoulders stay away from the ears. Exhale, hands go down, right foot steps to the back of the mat, lower the knee to the floor. Inhale, reach the arms high, let the palms meet above you, sink the pelvis towards the mat. Exhale, hands back to the floor, step the foot back, hips into the sky, downward dog, one breath. 
Right leg, inhale, lift it to the sky, keep it as straight and strong as you can. Exhale, step the foot between the hands, this time keep the back knee lifted. Left hand is going to stay onto the floor. As you breathe in, send your right arm to the sky. Maybe you've got a little bit more room to work with here. See if you can keep letting that right arm fall behind you as you turn your chest to the sky. Take one more big breath in and then breathing out. Hands to the floor, left foot steps in, both feet at the top of the mat. Inhale, chest pulls forward, thighs press back. Exhale to forward fold. Inhale, rising to stand, press down through the feet, rise tall out through the fingertips. Exhale to refold, hands to the mat, hips pressing high to the sky. Inhale, finding that length through your torso. Exhale, hands either side of the feet, left foot all the way to the back of the mat, drop the knee to the floor. Inhale, into that low lunge. Squeeze through your left glutes to help that hip open. Exhale, hands return to the mat. Hips go into the sky as we come into down dog. Breathing in. And breathing out. With our left leg, inhale, sending it to the sky. Point or reach through the ball of your foot. Exhale, stepping it between the hands, keep the back knee lifted, right hand stays to the floor. Breathing in, left arm reaches tall, option to keep going, let the arm fall towards the left as you find a deeper twist into the body. Deep breath here, and then breathing out. Hands to the floor, back foot steps in, feet are together at the top of the mat. Inhale, chest pulls forwards. Exhale to forward fold. Inhale, rising up to stand, arms go to the sky. And then exhale, release your arms alongside your body, standing nice and tall, soften the shoulders away from the ears. Give yourself again this moment of stillness. We're gonna use that sequence and build it from there. So next inhale again, arms to the sky. Exhale, forward fold, hands to the mat. Inhale, halfway lift, draw the chest long. And exhale, hands go down, right foot steps to the back of the mat. The toes stay tucked under and the knee drops to the floor. For one breath, we inhale into the lunge. Think of reaching the chest away from the hips. And as you exhale, let your hands come back to the mat. Now, keeping your back knee as stepped far back away from your front foot as you can. So maybe you've got some room to wiggle it a little, little further back. We're gonna shift back into our hamstring stretch, our half split. So the hips are roughly on top of the back knee. Don't be too pernickety about that. But importantly, the toes are pulled up away from the mat, flexing the toes towards the shin, and our spine is staying nice and long, chest pulling forwards. The leg does not need to be straight. We want to think of the belly and the thigh staying nice and close together. Using your breath in, think of your chest pulling out beyond your toes and your breath out to keep encouraging the body to fold. One more, breathing in. And then as you breathe out, let your hands start to walk towards the right side. So you've just started to twist your body ever so slightly here. Keep allowing those hands to walk. Your right hand, these toes are tucked under onto our back leg, is gonna to rest towards the heel, just like it did towards the start of the class. Now this becomes a balance pose, so move carefully and slowly. Breathe in, start to send your left arm to the sky as you push your hips forwards. Reach through your left toes as you come into this half camel variation. So the front leg doesn't have to be be straight but you can straighten it if that's available to you but we then try and turn the chest to face the sky as the left arm reaches up and over we're squeezing through the right glutes pushing the hips forwards and thinking of pushing the right hip towards the front of the mat and the left hip to pull towards the back of the mat think of expanding into the front line of the body breathe in and then with control, see if you can let go of that back heel, come all the way forward to the front of the mat, harder than it looks. And then we're returning into down dog. So lifting that back knee, stepping yourself back and finding your down dog again. Two breaths this time, inhale and exhale. Keep opening through those armpits one more, breathe in and breathing out. 
Great, right leg. Inhale, reaches to the sky. With that leg in the sky now, let the knee bend so the heel falls towards your bum. Twist your hips slightly towards the right so you're really opening into that right hip flexor, twisting the chest as well a little bit too. Hold that leg, breathe in, and then breathe out. Place the foot between the hands. Help it there if it needs the help. And this time we're gonna drop the back knee again. So left hand is gonna stay on the floor. So option, you can stay in just this variation of a twist if the next bit doesn't seem uh, your cup of tea. Otherwise, you're gonna take that right arm all the way up, all the way over, bend that back knee and take hold of your back foot. Now, as and when, or if you get that foot, give the heel a pull in towards your bum, but your hips are still sinking forwards and down. You can always use a yoga strap or a belt or a I don't know, dressing gown, cable, to help hook your foot if you can't quite reach. And if you have that and you've still got more to give in your body, you can drop your left forearm to the floor to deepen that stretch. Keep encouraging the heel in towards the hip and give that back knee a gentle press down against the floor. Ideally, it's actually the top of your thigh that should be resting onto the mat rather than the bony kneecaps. That's when things start to feel uncomfortable. So you can then have your padding with you if you need. Take another deep breath in. Give that foot one more little encouragement in towards your hips. And then breathe out, release it down. Hands to come to the mat if you lower it down. The back foot is going to step in to meet the front foot at the top of the mat. Use your inhale, lengthen the body forwards and your exhale to forward fold. Inhale, reach your arms to the sky. Tailbone stays tucked, straight long line. Second side, exhale, release, fold over, release through the head. Inhale, a long spine, thighs press backwards. And exhale, hands go down, left foot steps back, the toes stay tucked under and we drop the knee to the floor. Breathing in, one breath into the lunge. Arms reach overhead, squeeze the arms towards the head. And then exhale, hands come back to the floor. Again, before we move into the sort of half split, see if you can move that back knee any further back. You might be at your limit already, so don't worry if you can't. Shift that, those hips backwards, flex the foot. Fingertips can come back towards you. If you're struggling to reach the floor here because the hamstrings aren't giving us enough flexibility, keep the knee more bent. We don't want to be balancing as we try and stretch our hamstrings here. And you can also, um, Use yoga blocks if you have them. Press the heel gently or as strongly as you're happy to into the mat and keep pulling that chest forwards, finding as much length in your spine as you can. Each inhale grows you taller out the crown of your head. And each exhale, maybe there's room to deepen or maybe there's just an opportunity to become a little bit more comfortable. Last one to breathe in. And then as you breathe out, let your hands start to walk over to the left side. So again, you can bring blocks with you if you're using them. You can keep this front leg bent. Walking our way towards that left side. Now left hand is gonna to rest towards our left heel. Remembering it's balanced, so we're moving slowly, purposely. Inhale, right arm reaches tall. Reach through those right toes as you come into your half camel. You might then be able to start turning the chest more towards the sky. Keep thinking of your right pelvis pulling backwards and your left pelvis pushing forwards. Breathe into the belly. Think of stretching the front line of the body. Breathing out. Hold the core firm to maintain your balance. Last one, breathe in. And then breathing out. See if you can push your way to the front of the mat and then return the front foot to the back of the mat and into down dog. Breathing in, breathing out one, breathing in, and breathing out two. And then left leg this time. Inhale, send it to the sky. It stays straight to begin with and the pelvis faces the floor. And then exhale, turn the pelvis to face the left hand side. The knee in the sky bends, pull the heel towards your bum and maybe even look underneath your left armpit. Hold it there as you breathe in and then breathing out. Bring it to the top of the mat one way or another. Drop the back knee down and your couple of options for your twisted monkey. 
right hand stays down option just to reach to the sky or take that hand in the sky see if you can find your back foot as you give that heel a pull in towards your bum as before you can stay here on the right hand or maybe you have room to drop the elbow to the mat keep allowing the chest to turn to face towards this left knee and giving that back thigh that back knee a gentle little press down into the mat each inhale, think of broadening across your chest, keep turning. And each exhale, keep sinking the weight of the pelvis down towards the mat. Great, last one to breathe in. And then breathing out, gently let it go. Let yourself come up onto the hands if you went down to the elbow. Back foot then steps in to meet, meet the front foot. Use the inhale to halfway rise and the exhale to forward fold. Inhale, all the way up to stand, arms reach overhead, gaze up to the fingertips. Exhale to release the hands and let your shoulders soften away from the ears. Maybe let your eyes close for a moment. Find stillness. And find that smooth movement of the breath. From here again, breathing in, arms to the sky. Breathing out, forward fold, hands to the floor, soften the neck, dangle the head. Inhale, halfway rise, chest pulls forwards. Exhale, hands to the floor, right foot stepping all the way back and lower down to that knee. I said we'd be doing lots of lunges, didn't I? So from here, lift your torso away from your front thigh and just allow yourself to sink into the lunge for a moment. Right glutes are squeezing, hips are dropping towards the mat as the chest lifts tall. Two options here, depending on how you get on. Right hand, again, you're gonna see if you can find your back leg, but this time going for the ankle and the foot is going to stay flexed. This would be option one. If it's available to you, take the left hand as well, interlacing your hands together so you've got a nice grip of your shin. Now usually, or what we've been doing so far, is pulling our heel towards our bum. We want to find strength in this one, so I want you to kick your foot towards the floor. Think of your shoulder blades squeezing together as you open into the chest. The glutes are staying nicely engaged, squeeze through your bum. Hold your core in tight and find that strength in your back leg to keep kicking away. Feel the openness across your chest. There's always that option to just do it with the one hand, the left hand can stay onto the knee. Take one more deep breath in, hold your balance here, trickier than it looks. And then as you breathe out, gently let it go. Hands come back to the floor and the foot steps back, the hips go to the sky and into downward facing dog. Breathing in. And breathing out. Great, with the right leg as you inhale, sending it to the sky, three-legged dog. As before, taking that little scorpion shape, so bend the knee, heel towards the bum, hips start to turn towards the right. Option to stay here, or if you want to, you can try flipping your dog into wild thing. So the foot in the sky is going to find the floor behind you, aim it as high up your mat as you can, go with control, and then the right arm either goes to the sky or goes all the way over alongside your right ear. Left leg is working towards straight, Push in to the ball of the back foot and push your hips and chest to the sky. Keep holding, guys, breathe in. And then see if you can reflip. So come all the way back over into your down dog, and then that right foot is coming to the top of the mat. All the way forwards. Let your back knee drop down. Cool, we're feeling awake this morning, aren't we? So this time, lifting your chest, breathing in, arms go to the sky, palms to meet, let the elbows then bend. The thumbs to drop down towards the shoulder blades. See if you can lift your chin as you press your head back against your arms, finding that openness into the triceps, breathe in. And then breathing out, hands to come back to the mat. Back foot steps in, meets the front foot, with your inhale, halfway rise. And your exhale to forward fold. Inhale, rising to stand. Thighs squeeze together, tall out through the crown of the head. Exhale, second side, forward fold. Hands to the mat. Using your inhale, halfway lift, lengthen forwards. And 
on the exhale, hands go down, left foot to the back of the mat and drop the knee to the floor. So first, the torso rises away from the thigh, keeping your hips nicely sunk. Again, making sure your knee feels comfortable with padding or doubling your mat over. Your right hand can stay onto your knee. Let your left hand come to find your ankle. So it feels like you're holding your shin instead. This is your option one. Second option, see if you can interlace your hands behind that shin so they're both holding the leg. From there, think of it as a strength pose. Kick that back foot away from you. Squeeze the shoulder blades as you broaden across your chest. Lift your chin and push that foot as though you want to try and take it back to the floor. Each deep breath is expanding into the belly and chest. Each exhale, finding a little more heaviness through the hips. Stay with it guys, one more, breathe in and breathing out. Make sure we're not slingshotting the foot away from us. Hands to the mat, foot steps back and into our down dog. Two breaths here, let the breath slow a little, calm a little. Breathing in and breathing out. So again, we're gonna try our transition to wild thing. Option to stay in the down dog if you prefer. Left leg, inhale to the sky. Three-legged dog to begin with. Then the knee bends, the hips start turning to the sides. So we're starting to initiate that roll of the pelvis open. As you try to take that foot to the floor behind you, think of shifting forwards towards plank as you do it. So your shoulder is coming on top of your wrist. Place the foot down. Push the hips to the sky and see if we can find a little more length through our right leg. Left arm is either upwards or over alongside the ear and strong through that right arm to really turn the chest to the sky and press through the ball of that back foot. Hold it guys, breathing in. And then find your strength to reflip. Draw that foot to the top of the mat and then place the knee to the floor. With a nice deep breath in, the chest rises, the palms meet above us, and then bending the elbows, thumbs towards shoulder blades, lift the chin away from the chest and allow the head to gently press against the arms to encourage that further opening. Breathing in, and then breathing out, releasing the hands back down to the mat. This time, instead of stepping forwards, we're going to step our front foot back, to meet the knees or meet the other knee so that we're kneeling and then draw ourselves up nice and tall. We've done lots of different sort of camel-y shapes but we've not yet done our camel so we're going to move into camel pose. If you have done it many a time and you're comfortable with untucked toes then do go ahead otherwise we're going to tuck our toes so that our heels are a little bit more lifted it means we have less um, we need less flexibility in our lower spine to reach them. Hands are going to come to our waist. First, as you breathe in, think of picking up your rib cage and lifting it to the sky. So you're going up. Lift the chin away from the chest. And as you exhale, squeeze your shoulder blades together as you push your hips forward, squeezing your bum as well. Every muscle in the back line of the body is squeezing. Option to keep your hands here, or you can take your hands to your heels. Keeping these hips, forwards on top of the knees so we're not doing this shape hips are staying forwards chest is open an option for your chin to fall all the way back where well, it's very hard to talk <laughs> stay with it keep that engagement in the back of the body breathe in and stretch the front of the body last one here deep breath in and then breathing out, step your hands back to your waist, lift your body up and then slowly untuck your toes. Let your bum sit to your heels. Give yourself a moment, maybe just rest your hands to your thighs or towards your belly and chest, your chin to fall towards your chest, maybe close your eyes and just allow your body to slow down out of that pose. It's a big old back bend and therefore brings in those feelings of panic brings in those feelings of being unable to breathe. So give yourself a moment to re-regulate through the breath. And then walk your hands forwards to the top of the mat. And we're gonna come all the way down onto our bellies. So whichever way that you like, maybe let your elbows bend alongside your body until you're all the way down nice and flat. Taking our scorpion 
supine now. So well, actually I should say prone. So the right arm is going to reach out. Palm faces the floor alongside the shoulder. So we're making a big capital T shape. Use the left arm, roll yourself onto your side, and then this left leg, scorpion tail. You can choose to leave it here if you prefer, if this is nice and comfortable. You can bend that top leg, lift it away, and step it to the floor behind you. A similar sort of movement pattern to wild thing, but significantly easier on the body. Think of the knee staying high towards the sky, and giving that palm a gentle press down against the mat. And then roll yourself back onto your belly. Taking the same shape on the other side. Left arm reaches out, palm faces down. Let your head rest onto the floor as you roll onto your left side. Option to stay there, or you can add that scorpion tail. Foot steps off the floor behind you as you keep the knee lifted to the sky. Roll yourself back onto your belly. Find a little bit of strength to push your way up onto your knees and then simply swing the legs around and find yourself onto your bum, facing the front of the mat. So I want us to just spend these last few moments finding a little bit of strength in the areas that we've found lots of stretch because notoriously these hip flexors, are, hip flexors of ours uh, weaken when they're in this shape, they're not doing a lot. So we're gonna target those now, you're gonna love it. Step your feet just a little bit wider, maybe just off the sides of your mat, so not super, super wide. Your options are either to keep your feet flexed or to point your toes. I'm a pointer, I find it legs, lets my legs feel stronger. Take your hands to straddle your right thigh and your chest is facing out towards your right fingertips. Keep your body as upright as you can, try not to lean backwards and see if you can lift those right, that right foot or the whole leg off of the mat. Keep trying to find lift. If you've found lift, start to draw circles with the toes, tiny little circles. Think of pulling the leg in towards the pelvis, squeezing this quad muscle on the top of the leg and lift and lift and lift. Chest stays tall, body weight stays pulling forwards. Great guys, let that one rest down. And if this quad muscle on the front of your leg suddenly went then it's because it was working hard. See if we can find the same amount of success or even more success on the left side. Point or flex, tell this leg it's about to do something that requires activation and strength. Hands either side of the thigh, not too far forwards. You're making life too difficult for yourself. Lift your chest, stay tall. See if the leg can find some height. If it can, draw yourself a little circle. Maybe see if you can write your name in the sky with your toe, that's a good fun one. Otherwise, keep trying to find that lift pull the leg in towards the body and keep your chest nice and tall. Those with longer names are gonna have a harder job with that one. <laughs> Give it a little try and then place the leg down. Give the leg a little rub if it needs. Putting some things together, see if we can find a little bit more strength here. We're gonna come back to the right side. Take those hands, either side of the thigh, make sure we've got the whole palm down not fingertips. Keep yourself nice and tall. Both legs are staying very straight. Rounded spine, see if we can lift our bum off of the mat. Pull your hips up towards your ribs, lean your chest towards your knee, and then let yourself rest down. See if we can find it on the other side. Hands straddle the left thigh. This is a straddle lift, or it's a, it's a version of. Rounded spine, long through the triceps. Press down, see if you can lift through the hips. Holding it if you found success. And then exhale to let yourself come down. Bring your feet back together. You're lucky, guys. I'm running short of time, so I'm going to skip out the next stage, next stage of that pose. Maybe next time. Knees are going to stay bent. Feet onto the floor. Reach your arms forwards and slowly allow yourself to roll all the way down onto your back. Once you are there, the knees hug in towards the chest giving yourself a nice little squeeze. And then let your knees fall towards the right. Let your left arm reach out in the opposite direction. Your gaze can go towards the hand. 
ending with a nice supine twist, wringing out that area of the lower back, giving the lower back a stretch, that area of the body that takes a little bit of a battering when we sit for so long and we slouch and we hunch and we round, twisting it out, letting everything feel back to neutral. And then finally, all the way over to the other side. Legs go to the left, arm goes to the right. Gaze goes with the hand as the breath starts to slow, as the body starts to soften. And then finally rolling onto your back. Giving yourself one final little shuffle, little rearrangement before releasing your legs out onto the mat. Your arms alongside you, palms to the sky, shoulder blades towards each other and just completely let your body go here. Maybe taking a final deep breath and as you exhale, allow everything out through the mouth and as you do so, feel the body Release down against the mat. Softness in the limbs, softness in the face. And then taking a nice deep breath in. Reawakening yourself. Maybe finding movements with the hands and the feet or a nice big stretch up above the head. The knees can then step in to give yourself a little squeeze and then softly rolling your way up to seated onto the mat. With your final inhale, circle the arms wide up to the sky. And your final exhale, hands to the belly and the chin to the chest. Namaste everyone and thanks so much for joining in this morning. I hope you enjoyed the flow. Um, there were so many yummy bits of that class that I had planned that I couldn't quite squeeze in. So I'm going to have a similar sort of um, theme coming up soon I think. So some great drills I wanted to throw in for you. Um, anyone that missed it and that does my Monday night flows, um, my Monday night class has been moved to 6pm. So if you want to do some yoga tomorrow evening you can join me at 6 o'clock. Otherwise, if you want something a little more gentle than it was today, uh, I do Thursdays at six o'clock. Uh, good job for keeping up today. It was a challenging flow. I'm sure you're feeling the heat. There was definitely a point there where I was like, I can feel that my heating is on and it does not need to be. Um, so good job. If you have any questions or just any comments in general, uh, I'd love to hear from you down the side of the uh, chat box just on the screen. Um, as always, thank you so much to those that donate to my classes and helping me keep running them. Um, if you are able to donate anything at all, I'd be super appreciative. And there is a link to my PayPal in the description just below this video. Have a lovely day, uh, whatever you're doing.